This interview really is disgusting. Just absolutely appalling stuff. It's caused widespread outrage and indeed disgust for what I would say are very obvious reasons. Now, the interviewee is Mustafa Barghouti. I've interviewed him myself on this channel. He's a very respected Palestinian politician. He's a medical doctor by training. He's the leader of the Palestinian National Initiative. Now, that's actually a left of center secular Palestinian movement, which calls for an independent Palestinian state based on the territories occupied by Israel in 1967 with East Jerusalem as its capital. It's got nothing, absolutely nothing to do with, say, Hamas, which rules Gaza, or indeed Fatah, which rules the West Bank. Now, most of the British media is, in my view anyway, frankly a raging disgrace. I'm not saying it's all rosy and utopian in other Western states, but there is, I feel, something particularly shocking about the British media ecosystem compared to many of its equivalents. You know, a healthy media should seek to inform and educate, to arm citizens with the facts so they can forge their own informed views and make informed decisions. That is crucial, really, in a healthy democracy. But with much of the UK media, obviously there are honourable exceptions, there's this combination of not only being painfully ignorant, but almost revelling in that ignorance. In the cover coverage of the horror of Gaza, there's no sense at all for much of it that there's any real understanding of the issue. There's no depth, no real historical context in most cases. There's the rampant racism of the British media, the bigotry, the constant punching down. International guests often find meeting the British media quite the experience as they hit with questions which I guess just mix banality with just really basic gotchas for the sake of it, with little attempt to enlighten the audience. Now, with that context, enter stage right Julia Hartley Brewer of Talk TV. Easy to dismiss her as a shock jock, as a pantomime villain, really. She often seems to, to revel in being deeply unpleasant. When Andrew Tate, yes, that Andrew Tate, once went gunning for Greta Thunberg, Hartley Brewer tweeted, I choose Andrew Tate's life every single time over the life of a half-educated, autistic, doom-mongering eco-cultist, and the only car I own is a diesel Tigurin. Don't ask to pronounce that. Lovely stuff. She deleted it, but didn't retract or indeed apologise for it. Now, let's just listen to a clip from Julia Hartley Brewer's interview with Mustafa Barghouti. You say you don't approve and of... And do you think that Israel is a democratic country? I Netanyahu know is that Israel is a democracy. They have elections. No. This man is now uh, has three, four courts against him because yes. of four cases of I know. corruption. This man knows okay. if the war we have, stops. We he haven't will got go time to, to do the entire history and of Benjamin Netanyahu, what, who is not is a not popular history. figure in Israel. This I, is, this, I'm not, I'm not here to defend Benjamin Netanyahu. Right. Mustafa, is it possible to. Whenever I speak. Right. Whenever I, I speak about Palestinian rights, or no. Palestinian situation, you, you claim it is history. I'm talking about what's happening today. No, I know, and this I'm trying... This is not history. Can we... Can we just... You, you, <laughs> so, you talked about how you don't want Israel, Israel... You're saying, Israel, that October the 7th happened, you're placing that in historical context. I understand that. Please don't say that again. We don't have time for it. You've made that point five times already. I don't okay. know what you have time oh for. Oh, my let God, me for, for my the love attempt. of God, let me finish a sentence, man. I don't, maybe you're not used to women talking. I don't know. But I'd like to finish a sentence, sir. Anyway, so... No, you are misleading the public now really? by claiming this thing Right, I've got 20 seconds left. I'm not even going to bother trying to answer. Them, if you don't think Israel's reaction is acceptable, what would have been an acceptable reaction to you? You've got 10 seconds left. To end occupation and allow peace to prevail for both people. That's their reaction. Brilliant. Yeah. Sorry to have you know, been a woman speaking to you, but there you are. Doctor... Where to begin? Where to begin, really? I mean, just firstly, just on a point of fact, when did having an elections just make a country automatically a democracy? Russia has elections. It's got multiple political parties competing against each other. If we're going to be all technical about it, do we think that makes Russia a democracy? Now, a country which illegally rules over three million Palestinians in the West Bank who have no say over their own future, a basic tenet, pillar of democracy, who are, as the courageous Israeli journalist Gideon Levy put it to me, are kidnapped, held hostage by the Israeli military, where they're arbitrarily killed, tortured, driven from their own land, multiple human rights abuses. That's not a democracy. Within its own internationally recognised borders, the form of democracy which exists has been long in decline. From the nation-state law passed in 2018, which states only Jewish people have the right to national self-determination there, emphasising the third-class citizenship rights or status of the 20% or so of Israeli citizens who are Palestinians, to Benjamin Netanyahu's ongoing attempt to gut the checks and balances of the Supreme Court. The 
trajectory is very clear. That aside, the front of this so-called interviewer, who constantly harangues and interrupts her guests, claiming that someone she's, again, just, I mean, frankly speaking over, or speaking to, as though he's a serial killer or something, is speaking over her. But the big mistake in all of this would be to treat Julia Hartley Brewer as just some raging extremist who is unrepresentative of a broader phenomenon. As it is, her show is constantly graced with the presence of Labour and Tory backbenchers, so she's treated as this kind of respectable and mainstream commentator. This interview, in my view, reflects the absolute raging contempt the Western media has, in large part, towards the Palestinian people. And that contempt, frankly, can only be described for what it is, and that is racist. Now, Mustafa Barghouti has nothing to do with Hamas at all. He's a political rival of Hamas. He's a secular, progressive Palestinian leader. And yet here he is, treated with raging, burning and open contempt. When he seeks to get a word in edgeways, Julia Hartley Brew explodes with fury and suggests it's because he's got contempt for women. Maybe you're not used to women speaking, she says. Very clearly, in my view, and in the view of many, many people who've watched this, tapping into a racist caricature of Palestinians as being innately contemptuous towards women. Now, for Mustafa Barghouti, who is committed to building a secular, progressive Palestinian democracy, one which I know would protect the rights of women, if he's unacceptable to Julia Hartley Brewer, if he's someone to be treated as, I don't know, like the personification of Satan, which Palestinian voice is acceptable to her? Who? A Palestinian who accepts the mass slaughter of their own people and the raising of Gaza to the ground, which is how Israel's onslaught should accurately be described. Well, good luck with that one. You see, we've seen this from the very start of this horror across the media. We have. Repeated examples of Palestinians who, once again, like Mustafa, have absolutely nothing, zero, zilch to do with Hamas, who've had multiple members of their families killed, interviewed, I say interviewed in the loosest possible sense, on national television, as though, again, they're criminals in the dock to be aggressively interrogated, where, above all else, the questions are, condemn, condemn Hamas, you must condemn Hamas, until they're blue in the face, with nothing on those terms about the Israeli military slaughtering their loved ones. Now, these Palestinians, who have no political power at all, are interrogated with more aggression than spokespeople for the Israeli state and military, even as they inflict one of the great crimes of our age on the Palestinian people, over 10,000 killed Palestinian children alone. Now, while the killing of Israeli civilians is rightly seen as intolerable, there's no limit, from what I can see in the media, to how many Palestinians can be killed. And I'll be doing a video, actually, on a new study which exposes the BBC's own racism in that regard. We have the statistics, the facts to back this up, this claim. So yes, be appalled at the behaviour of this shock jock. Indeed, be appalled that someone so obviously odious, I mean, it's like a one-dimensional bad guy in the film, has the platform that she does. But she simply reflects the Western media's raging contempt towards Palestinians in a slightly less subtle fashion than her colleagues. And that is the real outrage, one which explains how one of the great atrocities of our time has not only been accepted by our media, but in many cases just actively cheered on. So I hope at least the channel we have here offers something of a counterweight to that horror show. And in that spirit, we have so many interviews you should check out and many interviews to come, particularly with Palestinians, but also Israeli peace activists, journalists, Jewish peace activists um, around the world, um, as well as videos which I hope explain what's really happening on in terms of the ground in, in Gaza, the horrible atrocities, but also taking on the way that our outrageous media, in large part, behaves. Please like, subscribe, do share this video, um, and you can keep the show on the road as everyone on patreon.com forward slash 4 We have the audio podcast as well. Lots of love, I'll speak to you soon.